All right, in this video, I'm going to show you how to add these two fractions. And I'm going to use a number line to try and help you understand why the rule is the way it is for adding fractions. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw both of these fractions on the number line. And so 2 thirds looks about like that. So here's 2 thirds right here. And 1, 2, 3, here's 3 fourths right here. Okay, now you can see that these intervals are not the same intervals. Up here, thirds are bigger than quarters. And so we can't directly add them together. That would be kind of like trying to add one nickel plus one dime, or in this case, two nickels plus three dimes, and ending up with like five something or others. So we can't just simply add two plus three and get some sort of an answer because these intervals are different from these intervals. And we have to cut these intervals into something so that without changing the actual length, we get the same number of intervals. And so that's what's called a, that's getting a common denominator. So in this case, a common denominator is going to be 12. Now what does that mean? Well, what that means is we're going to take <coughs> this fraction up here, and each of these intervals, we're going to cut it up into four pieces. So instead of this being two-thirds, this now is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This becomes eight-twelfths. So two-thirds becomes eight-twelfths. And then down here, we're going to cut each of these four intervals into three pieces. So we're going to cut in one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So instead of this being three-fourths, it now becomes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It becomes nine-twelfths. All right, now you could see the picture all these intervals are the same size. They're all basically the same size. If it doesn't look the same size, it's because I didn't draw it particularly well. So in your traditional textbook math, you would say to yourself, well, what does 3 and 4 both go into? Well, they both go into 12. And that's, here's the picture right here. And how do you turn a 3 into a 12? You times by 4. So you do a 2 times 4, and that's how we got the 8. <clears throat> and basically what that was is we took each of these intervals and we cut it into four pieces. And then similarly with the three quarters, the three fourths, how do you turn a four into a twelve? You times by three. And so we do a three times three and that gives us nine. And that's basically saying we took each of these existing intervals and cut them into three pieces and that's why we multiply by three here. Well now that everything is the same sized intervals, we can add. So 8 twelfths plus 9 twelfths is equal to 17 twelfths, all right? Now, up here, if this is a 0 and this is a 1, and this is a 0 and this is a 1, we can see that one whole is 12 units or 12 little fractional pieces, so 12 twelfths. So if we have 17 twelfths, that's definitely more than one whole. So we can take this and say, oh, well, if we have 17 pieces and it takes 12 pieces to make one whole. We have one whole plus five pieces left over. So the answer is one and five twelfths. Now, if these were mixed numbers, meaning we have some whole number, there you go. Well, all you do is you temporarily ignore the whole numbers you can add the fractional pieces. We get 1 and 5 twelfths. But now we do have to remember that there was a 5 and a 1 here. So this becomes 6 and 17 twelfths, which makes this, instead of a 1, it turns it into a 7. Because this piece right here is equal to 1 and 5 twelfths, plus the original 6 gives us 7 and five-twelfths. So here's a second example of how to add fractions. And we have 
First, we're going to draw these two fractions on a number line just so that we get a nice little idea of how this looks. So 1 fourth lives right here on the number line. If this is 0 and this is 1, so 1 fourth lives there. And if this is 0 and this is 1, then 7 eighths lives right there. All right, so clearly you could see the intervals are not the same, so we need to get a common denominator. And in this case, the common denominator, there's an infinite number of common denominators that we can work, but we're gonna, that, that, that would work, but we're going to use 8 because it's kind of a small one. And because we can see that to turn a 4 into an 8, you multiply by 2, and then 1 times 2 equals 2. Now, what does that mean? That means up here in these intervals, you take each of these four, four intervals and cut them in half. That's why it's times by two. And all of a sudden, we get eight intervals up here. We already have eight intervals down here. We're done. So this, we could just bring the seven straight down because seven eighths is still seven eighths, so nothing changes. Now we're ready to add these two fractions together. Two plus seven equals nine, so we have seven I mean, 9 eighths. And remember what this means. 9 eighths means it takes 8 fractional parts to equal one whole. And we have 9 fractional parts. So that means we have enough to equal one whole. Plus, we have one little eighth left over. And so the answer is 1 and 1 eighth.